first option they said was um, termination of the pregnancy. Caleb was kind of a surprise to us. We found out we were expecting our fourth child. We had our first ultrasound at 20 weeks and our ultrasound is probably what kind of let me know that something was maybe a little different. And normal ones for us were like 45 minutes. Caleb's was about an hour and a half. One or two days later, um, I'll never forget that I was upstairs folding laundry by all the bedrooms and I got a phone call and I listened to my voicemail and there was like three voicemails from the, um, the doctor herself. And the last one was pretty urgent. Lorena, I need to talk to you um, about your ultrasound. So I called back and I got to talk to her on the phone. So she expressed that there had been some findings on Caleb's ultrasound that his, he had kind of deformity in the, in the back and she gave me the two or three things that it could be. And then she also told me that there was a couple things that were found that they weren't really for sure about. So she said, I'm referring you to a specialist in Sioux Falls. So you guys' next appointment is on Tuesday. I think it was like in two days. Mm -hmm. And when she said that we were going to a specialist that quickly, I was shocked. When Lorena calls and there's something serious, a lot of times she's trying to hide it and goof around. And you could kind of tell something was going on. And then all of a sudden she broke down and started crying. Um, you know, and said there was something wrong with uh, the baby. My first reaction was talking to God in a, in a, in a real quiet way. Because you don't, you realize at that point you ain't in charge and something's happened that you're not in control of at all. It's inside your womb. You know, as you sat there throughout the weekend and the next few days, you start to think of, because um, I think at that stage of the game they had said that they knew it was something along the lines of spina bifida. Um, so then you start thinking of the things that maybe they won't be able to do, you know. You know, you probably won't be able to, you know, maybe not walk normal or uh, maybe not walk at all. Um, and then you think of the things that, that that means and you think back of all the times in your life and you're like, well man, that would really kind of stink if you couldn't, couldn't have those experiences. Every time you go, they focus on the baby's defects. You know, they focus on everything that's wrong. Tim asked George one night, before we went to the specials, what should we name him? And George said, Super Caleb. And then for the mill name, um, I had a favorite grandpa, his name was Everett. And we'd never thought about using that name before, so we picked it. He was an overcomer, and he also was born with a cleft palate and cleft lip. And so when they told us at the specialist that day that this baby that we had just named Caleb, that he also had a cleft lip and cleft palate, it was just like, it was just like a move of, of God um, come over me to remind me I, I know what's going on. There was a song that kept going over and over and over in my head, um, Great is Thy Faithfulness, the old hymn. But the words just kept meaning more and more and more the farther that we went on, and it was it was really cool. And at the birth, we held hands and we were singing, and and I remember singing and humming, "Great is Thy faithfulness." So he was born, beautiful baby boy, and they let me hold him after five minutes, they took him, cleaned him up, and I remember the doctor over here pointing to a specialist over here and said, let mommy hold him. And so they covered his growth on his back with some black cloth, and they were very careful, you know, you don't, don't touch the back, so it's kind of like cradling him on the side of your arm, and they brought him over to me carefully, and I got to hold him. And they were feeding him with the feeding tube um, of the milk that I could pump for him, and that was 
that was what he had. So he was on his tummy for the first three days. And then I would go down there and I pushed for them to release me early. Like, I'm gonna be with him. So like by the second day I was with him in his room. And before the lactation consultant came in, I asked the nurse if I could hold him again. So then I tried to nurse him and he latched on and started drinking. And at that moment, the lactation lady came in for the first time and she came in with all of her fancy bottles to start feeding him and she was pretty shocked. Nobody with cleft lip or cleft palate feeds their babies by, by breastfeeding and, and he did throughout the whole thing. That was pretty amazing. That was a miracle for all of us to see. is also missing the corpus callosum in his brain. That can affect a lot of things. They told us it's a pretty wide spectrum of, of effects that it can do. You can, uh, it can affect your walking, speaking, understanding. He could go break out into seizures, he could have extreme autism, choking a lot, not eating. So that was quite news too. We were like, wow. They couldn't believe he's doing as well as he was doing with a missing bar connecting your right brain to left brain. We made it through that. That was the hard part. And yeah. he's going to be normal from here on out. Right. Um, we got over the first surgery. Mm -hmm. He was healing good. Yeah. So then he, he woke up with a fever. And you just kind of think, well, he's a typical kid. You know, baby has a fever or cold or something like that. We were downstairs. And I got Caleb up to change his diaper in the morning. And I was still in the process of cleaning this large incision on his back that we have to clean and be very careful. So I was changing his diaper and I noticed there was um, discolored pus, a large pocket um, coming out of his incision. And I knew right away, we have to go. So we, he took me to Spencer Hospital and by the time we got there, Half of his incision was just completely packed and full of um, pus and infection and swelled up. And he had, um, he didn't look good. His eyes showed he was sick, he had a high fever. So they called the neurosurgeons and, and we got admitted right away and we went, went in and got checked and they took that liquid or the pus or whatever you want to call it into test and then he came back and told us that he had bacterial meningitis. And it was in the spine and it was pretty severe. Mm -hmm. So they went in and neurosurgeons opened the spine back up and um, tried to clear out that in infection. And, and so... They had said that there wasn't any more in infection and sent him home. And they brought me in the room and they're like, we're going to hook you up with a local nurse that's going to come and help you do all these medicines. <laughs> well, they couldn't find one. We live out in the country and there was no certified nurse in our area to work with pediatric or to do all that. So they came in and trained Tim and I um, how to administer all of this medicine. One of the things that goes with spina bifida is they can get uh, hydrocephalus and um, they put a shunt in there to help drain the brain fluid. And so through the, the process of this checkup, um, the neurosurgeon decided that he needed to have a shunt put in. When they do that, they take a sample of spinal, spinal fluid um, and just test it to see if there's anything in it. Well, in the process of the test, they found out that there was still bacteria in the brain fluid. He was already on two of the strongest antibiotics that they could give a baby. And then they told us that he was also fighting this new infection in the brain, in the spinal fluid, that was antibiotic resistant, um, a superbug. Um, Mayo Clinic Rochester Pediatric Department came and got Caleb and I about 11 o'clock on Friday night. So we flew to Mayo Clinic in Rochester late that night. Caleb was very sick. Um, it, was, it was a very significant time. I didn't know if he was going to make it. We went up in the air and I looked out the window and the song that came to my mind was, um, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. And I started singing it over and over and over, and the verses came to me like I'd never remembered them before. And it was this amazing peace that God gave me. We went in and they gave us our room, 
and within about 20 minutes, a neurosurgeon and her nurse um, came into the room and talked to me about Caleb. And she said, he's on the strongest medicine that we can give him. Already fighting bacterial meningitis and now with this super bug in his brain fluid. Um, we don't know what else to give him. And he's gonna have to fight it. I called my husband, of course, let him know everything. I got on Facebook and I, I said, prayer request for Caleb, I need faith-filled prayers. He needs healing. At the time, they were draining his brain fluid into a clear bag, and the brain fluid, when it was full of that infection, it had floaties in it, and it was really cloudy. And after the surgery, they brought him in, and they said, well, we'll see what happens. We don't know, you know he's gotta fight it. And one morning, the next morning, I woke up and I looked at that bag, because they would come and clean it out. I looked at the bag and it looked completely clear. And the neurosurgeon came in and uh, talked to me for a little bit and he took his sample that day. And within about 20 minutes, I looked down the hall and here he is like sprinting, running to the hospital, to our room. And it had big clear doors. And he was like excited but didn't know how to tell me. And didn't really believe it. He's like, uh, uh, the, it, those results show us it's completely clear and it's gone. We don't. We don't really understand this, you know, this doesn't make sense to us, and, and we can't always count on these tests, so um, we're going to keep you here for at least another week, for seven more days, and we'll come in and test the fluid every day. Um, and that's what happened. He, he was completely cleared of that, of that infection. It's neat as a mom to be able to watch neurosurgeons be shocked and watch the highly educated not know what to say or what to do when they experience a miracle that didn't come by you know a medical source it was it was a medical unexplainable miracle so to speak that the almighty had something to do with and i count that an honor you know i count that an honor i guess to be able to be a part of that it's pretty cool.